بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his wives To bless his family members To bless all his companions To bless every single one of us And to grant us all every form of goodness this evening, inshallah, I will commence by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity, for using us to spread the word, for using us to engage in acts of worship during the month of Ramadan. May Allah accept it from every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the fasting we've engaged in, the taraweeh we've engaged in, the charities we may have given, and all the good deeds we have engaged in the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May He make us from those who can regret over our sin. And may He make us from those who can turn a new leaf and start on a new page with a new sheet as clean as ever for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that, I also would like to thank this masjid who has invited me to come and render this taraweeh as well as the talks that have been taking place throughout the month of Ramadan. May Allah make this a means of entry into Jannah for all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from one, one and all. Sheikh has definitely spoken. As I said, we would like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us. If that has happened, there is nothing more than that we want. And the committee members as well as the others who are responsible for the masjid, the musallis, everyone else, the brothers, the sound and the, all the others who are involved, you know, as well as those brothers outside with the traffic and so on, Everyone who made an effort to come, may Allah reward us abundantly. There is nothing we can do to repay anyone. It is only Allah who can repay. So this is why we don't expect something from anyone besides a good dua to ask Allah's acceptance and to ask Allah to grant us Jannah and be pleased with us. I would like to dive straight into the topic because I'd like to end at the hour. And inshallah, we hope and pray that we can benefit. We want to cover quite a bit of ground this evening. We are talking about the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. The reason why I say it in the English language is because many people who do not know the Arabic term need to know what we believe about the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salatu wassalam. The Quran has mentioned or named several surahs after either the mother who was Mary, may peace be upon her, of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, or the family known as Ali Imran and in fact there is another surah known as Al-Ma'idah which means the laid table and that laid table cloth is connected to what Isa alayhi salatu wasalam brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there are many such surahs in the Quran and uh, chapters in the Quran we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us the truth we would also like to mention what we spoke about yesterday Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared the mother of Jesus, may peace be upon him, very, very carefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared her by her prior to her birth being dedicated by her mother for the place of worship and for ensuring that she will be dedicated. She had made this promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not knowing that she was bearing a female child. But when the female child came, they fulfilled the promise. She was born an orphan, meaning the father Imran, who was a very, very pious man, had passed away. And Imran had a record for being a very, very upright man, a very, very good sheikh. He used to lead the people in prayers and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Zakaria, who is the uncle of Maryam or Mary, may peace be upon her, was the one who brought her up. And he was responsible and we learned yesterday about the life of Zakaria and what happened. As a result, she was also a very, very pious girl. She grew up, Allah gave her lots of wisdom, lots of knowledge. She learned under the tutorship of Zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about various miracles that occurred when she was still very young. As she was being prepared for something very, very great to happen. One of the greatest miracles of all time was to happen to Mary, may peace be upon her, Maryam alayha salatu wasalam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what happened. 
وإذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله اصطفاك وطهرك واصطفاك على نساء العالمين Earlier, when she was still quite young, growing up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a message to her via the angels. And the angels told her, O oh Maryam, Allah has chosen you, purified you from all polytheism. Allah has made you one who will worship Him alone. So you are pure in every way, purified in your reputation, purified in your character and conduct. But above all, purified in your worship, it will not be rendered for anyone besides your Maker. And Allah has chosen you above all the women of your time. Subhanallah. Ya Maryam, qunuti li rabbiki, wasjudi warka'i ma'ar raki'in. Therefore, O Maryam, we want to inform you and instruct you. Submit unto Allah. Uqnuti li rabbiki. Submit for your own Rabb, the one who made you. And find yourselves from the ones who bow down and from the ones who are prostrate solely to their maker. So Allah says, ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهِ إِلَيْكَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the news and the information of the unseen that we are giving you. We are telling you the true version of the story of Mary and Jesus and Zachariah and John and so of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after some time, she continued to worship Allah. And she was very pious. And she had her place of worship within a place of worship, her own corner and cubicle. She had a cubicle in the sense that there was a partition between her and those who would come from her members of her family. She was in her own corner. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, thereafter, we called out to her again. In fact, in one place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Maryam, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَرْيَمْ إِذِنْ تَبَذَتْ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا مَكَانًا شَرْقِيًّا And remember, in the book, the story of Mary, may peace be upon her, Maryam alayha salatu was salam, when she took a place for her own worship, within the place of worship, she had her own cubicle towards the west. It was, sorry, it was facing the east. It was facing the east, Makanan Sharqiyan. It was a place facing the east. So she had a little corner by the eastern window. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fattakhadat min dunihim hijaba. She had had a hijab or a curtain between her and her family members. She was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her family members on the other side, as we know, we have cubicles sometimes in the corners of the masajid where people want to engage in i'tikaf and they want to spend time dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says she had had her place. We sent the angel Jibreel or the archangel Gabriel to her in the form of a handsome looking man and he went into her cubicle immediately she uttered words of protection from allah, in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from anything mischievous qalat inni a'udhu bir rahman minka in kunta taqiya she says i seek protection in allah from you so if you are intelligent if you are fearful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will understand that i have sought the protection of the maker and the creator so don't harm me immediately jibril alayhi salatu was salam says qala inna ma ana rasul rabbik li ahaba laki ghulaman zakiya i am the angel from your rabb i have come to give you good news that you shall bear a child who will be very pure she had this news now she is shocked, she is surprised, she is still listening to the information. Let's look at how it was worded in another place in the Quran. In Surah Ala Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنْهِ When the angels told Maryam, Mary, the daughter of Imran, that Allah is giving you glad tidings of a word, from him. What is that word? 
We spoke about it yesterday. Kun. Be. And it will be. The word is kaf and noon. We said yesterday, Amruhu bain al kafi wa noon. The instruction of Allah is between a kaf and a noon. Once those words are uttered, be, it automatically is. So we are giving you good news of a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will be a sign. There will be a child. We are naming him from now. So she is being told this already while she is sitting in her own seclusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ismuhu al-Masihu Isa ibn Maryam wa jihan fi dunya wal akhirati wa min al-muqarrabin His name shall be the Christ, Isa, Jesus, may peace be upon him, the son of Mary. He will be known as the son of a female. All of us here, we are known as the son of a male. In the sense that you are called Abdullah, your father is Abdurrahman, you are Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman. You are Abdullah, the son of Abdurrahman. However, when it comes to Isa, he was known by his mother's name. Isa, the son of Mary. Amazing. She is listening. She is obviously in awe. She is trying to digest. She knew that Allah is preparing her for something great. But she is getting the information. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He will be honored. Wajihan fi dunya wal akhirah. He will be honored in this world as well as in the next. Very honored man. وَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ And he will be from amongst those very close to Allah in the life after. In the sense that in the akhirah, he will also be very, very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this boy, this child that is going to come to you, honored and very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا وَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And he will be speaking to people from the cradle. So she is being told this already in advance. He will be speaking to people from the cradle as well as later on when he is aged. And he is from amongst those who will be pious. He will be very pious. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Maryam alayha salatu was salam, she heard this news. And she understood it very carefully. Before she knew it already, Jibreel alayhi salam had blown what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed him to blow. And she was already, she had conceived. She already had the child in her, in her belly, in her womb. Now she is surprised. Firstly, she is clean. She is a virgin, not married in any way. No form of mischievous. She was never ever immoral, immodest, not at all. She was dedicated. She barely came out of the place of worship unless for necessity. And now she is being told this is what is going to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, amazingly, قَالَتْ أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي غُلَامٌ وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرٌ وَلَمْ How can I bear a child when no man has touched me? And I am not from amongst those who are unchaste. I've never done anything wrong, immoral, unacceptable. I have maintained the purity of the highest level. And you are telling me that I'm going to bear a child? The response came. The response came. That is it. It is declared and decreed. And it is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very, very easy for your creator who has created to do this. And we will make him a sign for entire mankind. Let us pause there for a moment. The circle of creation and the qudra and power of the creator was being closed. What do we mean? Allah has created without the involvement of a male or a female, such as Adam. The first human being was Adam. May peace be upon him. There was no male involved, no female involved. Allah said be and he was created from dust, soil and created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, the second probability, Allah created through a male without the involvement of a female. Who was created in that way? Hawa or Eve, may peace be upon her. Through a male, no involvement of female. 
Then there was every one of us. After those two, everyone who came thereafter, they were created via male and female. That's the third probability. There's one more left to close the circle to show you the power of Allah. What is that? To create via a female without the involvement of a male, Allah left it for the time when Isa alayhi salam was sent. The Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, he was that miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with no involvement of a male, not that he was the son of Allah, astaghfirullah, Allah forbid, he was not the son of God, but he was a creature created miraculously by the word of Allah. What was that word? Allah said, be and he was. Just like Adam was created before, Allah says in the Quran, the example of Jesus is just like the example of Adam for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created Adam with some dust or some soil and he said be and he was. So Allah did the same with Jesus may peace be upon him. He said be and he was. So Isa alayhi salam began to grow in the womb of his mother. And his mother is now pondering and thinking and concerned she's been given good news he's going to be pious he's going to be good he's going to learn he's going to teach he's going to have revelation he's going to guide the people he will be able to speak and Allah gave this news and information to the mother prior to the birth she already knew this and he is going to be able to speak to people from the cradle as well as later on so from the very early days he was going to be able to speak to people now Maryam alayha salatu was salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this. And Allah says, فَحَمَلَتْهُ فَانْتَبَذَتْ بِهِ مَكَانًا She held this child to a place, a little bit of a distance from where she was. She was in Jerusalem. She decided to go to Bethlehem, Beit Lahem. She decided to go to Bethlehem. And when she got there, she was busy preparing. She was seeing, thinking. She was worried. She was very worried. Why was she worried? One is she knows she is pure. She is clean. On one hand, to deliver is a very big worry, tension. The secret is don't worry. That's the secret. But who doesn't worry? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all our women folk. The second concern, I'm going to take this child. How will people receive this child? I've been given responses, answers. I've been told who he is. I know everything. But these people will accuse me. They'll accuse the child. They might decide to do something against the child. What will happen? All this worry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the pains of childbirth drove her to the stump of or to a trunk of a date tree. So the, the date palm, the trunk of it, she had got to it and she's holding it due to the pain of childbirth. And she is hoping to herself, saying to herself, I wish I was dead before this and long forgotten. Because she is worried. She doesn't want to go against the decree of Allah. Not at all. But she is wishing. It's going to be so difficult. I wish I were dead. And I wish I was forgotten. And I wish this did not happen to me. So immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. فَنَادَاهَا مِن تَحْتِهَا He called from beneath. Now the question is who called? One of two. Either by the time she was holding this trunk as support. She gave birth and the child spoke. Now this is also mentioned in some of the books of Tafsir. Some of the Mufassirin say the child spoke. And this is, sounds very correct in the sense that it sounds very accurate. But there is another opinion that it was the angel that spoke. Either way, it is a message from Allah. So either way, it is a message from Allah. I feel that the more correct opinion is she had given birth as she had held support on that particular stump. And the child, as the child was now beneath her, the child called out, Fanada, Nada in the Arabic language means one male is calling. He called. Who called? Possibly the child. Allah Tahzani. Do not worry. Do not fear. 
Don't worry. قَدْ جَعَلَ رَبُّكِ تَحْتَكِ سَرِيَّا Just look beneath you. Allah has caused a spring of water to gush. Now this was a desert. There was no water. She needed something to drink. She was on her own delivering. No support besides that of Allah, which was more than enough. And she had this stump that she was holding on to, a trunk of a date palm. So Allah says, we've made water for you here. Just take a look. And not only will we give you a drink miraculously today, O Mary, but we are going to give you also fresh date, rich in mineral and vitamin. To this day, if you have the fresh date, childbirth, post-childbirth, or even before, it is very, very healthy, rich in iron. They say the breast milk of a woman, one thing it lacks is iron, doesn't have enough. Well, you have lots of dates. Allahu Akbar. Something that is amazing from the Quran. Date is rich in iron. I'm sure we know that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shake this date trunk a little bit. The trunk of the date palm. Shake it a bit. The beautiful dates, fresh dates will drop. So eat and drink as much as you want and thank Allah. Be happy and be glad. This is the miracle. And over and above that, it's either the child who's speaking or the message of Allah. The child is saying, Whenever you see a human being, tell them I have promised Allah and made a vow that I'm not going to speak to any human being, so don't talk today on that particular day. I'm not going to talk today. So as she went out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُهُ She now arrived, it was late afternoon when she arrived with the child, back to her people, going back into the place where she was in seclusion, holding the child at her chest, and walking very carefully, very, very calm, relaxed. Her face was beaming with light, and she was looking very happy. Normally when a person's committed a sin, they're very sad, they don't want anyone to know. She is holding the child, covering the child very well. The people began to see and started saying, Isn't that the Mary who's supposed to be in the place of worship? Isn't she the one who's supposed to be the pious? Isn't she the one who is the descendant of the Prophet Harun? The word Harun is used. It's either referring to some pious person in the community. So they used to call her the sister of Harun because there was someone known as Harun who was also very pious and she was also very pious. So they say sister of Harun or what is more correct, she was from the lineage of the prophet Harun who was also from Banu Israel. And because he was so pious and she had his blood in her being from his lineage, they always reminded her, you are from the family of such a pious man. Your mother is pious, your father is pious, your generations, your grandfathers, it dates back all the way to Harun. So Allah says, O oh Mary, you have come up with something very, very grave, very, very uncommon, unprecedented, something very dangerous and detrimental, something huge. What is this all about? Ya Ukhta Haruna, O sister of Harun. I explained who is the Harun, one of the two. Ya ukhta Harun, ma kana abuki mraa sawin wa ma kanat ummuki baghiyya. O sister of such a pious man, O person who is from the lineage of the Prophet Harun, your father never engaged in adultery. He was a very, very pious man. Your mother never engaged in adultery. Your father did not commit sin like this. What is this all about? Now this was an accusation of adultery, an accusation of engaging in illicit activity. How did you start? How did you become pregnant? How did you get this child? They're all asking, they're accusing. Who were the people at the time? 
They were Jewish people in the sense that they were Banu Israel, the children of Israel. Israel was Yaqub, Jacob. The prophet Jacob was known as Israel. So these are the children of Jacob. Jesus was sent to the children of Jacob. He was sent to Banu Israel, the children of Israel, as it is known. So these were the people around accusing the mother, telling her, you have committed a very, very grave sin. Your father wasn't like this. Your mother wasn't like this. فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ She knew the child is going to speak. Subhanallah. I don't need to say anything today. So when she pointed to him, they looked at her. They realized she doesn't want to talk. She's now pointing at the child. Is she foolish? قَالُوا كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَهْدِ صَبِيًّا They said, how can we speak to a child in a cradle here? Imagine a newborn baby. You want to talk to a baby. And as they were in this discussion, and they were talking to each other and talking to her and telling her, how foolish are you? You want us to talk to a baby? They heard the baby say, Inni Abdullah. I am the worshipper of Allah, the slave of Allah. Allah has given me the book, the revelation, and he has made me a prophet. Imagine a little child talking, a baby speaking. And Allah has blessed me wherever I go, it is blessed. For as long as I live, Allah has instructed me to engage in prayer and to give out charity, to be very charitable. May Allah make us steadfast with our prayer and our charities. And may He accept that from us as well. And he has instructed me to be obedient to my mother. Allahu Akbar. Here you have the role of the mother once again. This was special, but that rule applies to all of us for our mothers and our fathers. Sometimes some people neglect the mother, some people neglect the father. Remember, we need to respect both parents. We need to understand their roles and we need to know that they are priority in our lives. And we ask Allah to make us parents whom our children can look up to as role models. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجَعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا He has instructed me to be obedient, to be dutiful unto my mother. There was no father involved. That's why Allah says, my mother. And he has not made me from amongst the sinful. And he has not made me from amongst those who are unfortunate. And peace be upon me. The child is still speaking. Subhanallah. These people are baffled. They are gobsmacked to use the right term. Don't know what to say. Silent. Just watching. He's saying, May peace be upon me. The day I was born. The day I shall die. The day I will be resurrected. May the peace of Allah be upon me. He is speaking. They are shocked. So how do they react? These were priests. These were rabbis. These were people who used to teach the religion. Watching. They had just accused someone of adultery. And what happened? As they are watching. They are looking. They are hearing. There is no ways this is magic. There is no ways this is anything but a miracle. There is no ways this is anything but a sign from Allah the Creator. It is miraculous. They know the piety of this woman. They know the family. They know everything. They can see she's not worried. They can see the miracle child. They can see everything. But they are worried that if we now acknowledge this child, they are thinking future. This child is going to take the carpet from beneath our feet. Pull it. And what will happen? We won't have leadership anymore. Nobody's going to follow us anymore. People will now follow him. He is going to be the boss. He's going to be above us. The best thing for us to do is from now, let us fight him from that stage. So they continued. No, we're not interested. We would like to un you to understand this is a sin. You have committed immorality. You've come with a child. This child is illegal, illegitimate. This, what, this is what the Jewish people had said. And the Quran makes mention of this. They continued accusing Maryam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we purified her. She was pure. And they continued accusing. In the meantime, she had gone back 
to the place of worship and mention is not made of the detail of how the child grew up but the child grew up and later on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what happened to Isa alayhi salam before we get there let's make mention of something important there are people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says have started calling this young boy the son of God why was this this was because they didn't see the father to them there was no father so when they were told this is the this is a miracle from Allah they said well that is the son of Allah and they started saying this is the son of Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ma kana lillahi an yattakhidha min walad nay it is not befitting for the creator to take a son to have a begotten son it is blaspheme to relate to the creator who only needs to say be and anything he wants to make is created automatically it is blasphemous to relate to him to say he has a begotten son may allah safeguard us from such blasphemy naudhu billah so in islam we believe to say that the god almighty has a son is blasphemous the quran speaks about how sick that blasphemy is and the quran says how can they say that Allah the most merciful has a son and it is not befitting for the most merciful to have a son Allah says this statement is so blasphemous that the skies want to tear apart and the earth wants to explode and the mountains want to fall prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the severity and seriousness of such a dangerous statement against the maker himself. So even the creation of Allah are bearing witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not taken a son. And they are agitated at the fact that people are saying this. Yes, he did not have a father, but Adam neither had a father nor a mother. And Eve neither had, meaning Eve did not have a a mother meaning you we cannot even call Adam the father she was also created miraculously and when it comes to Jesus may peace be upon him he did not have a father that's what the Quran says but you cannot say the son of Allah and the begotten the word beget is so blasphemous if you have to check the meaning of it in the Oxford dictionary you'd probably hide your face may Allah protect us how can we say that for the maker of the universe he doesn't need that he is powerful. We believe the maker only needs to say be and it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this is a very powerful statement. Allah says, as this child grew, The same things Allah had promised the mother, he got. What did he get? Al-Kitaba. He got the book, the revelation. Al-Hikmata. Allah gave him wisdom and Allah gave him prophethood. And Allah gave him the Torah. He knew the Torah off by heart. Remember, he met the Prophet John, may peace be upon him, Yahya alayhi salam. It is reported that there was a discussion between the two of them at one stage. And Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, may peace be upon him, tells Yahya in one narration that you should pray for me. So John, Yahya alayhi salam, says to him that no, you should pray for me. So he says, no, you are better than me. He says, what do you mean I am better than you? So Yahya or John, may peace be upon him, says to Isa or to Jesus here, he says, you declared peace upon yourself. The creator declared peace upon you. And you said, may peace be upon me. And in my case, Allah is saying that may peace be upon him. So it goes back to Isa, Jesus may peace be upon him, he says, well, in your case, Allah declared the peace. In my case, I declared it myself. So this was just a discussion because Yahya, the same thing happened. He also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we granted him as a child to Zakaria after a long time. Remember, these two were cousins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that 
we have blessed him we have granted him peace and salam and so on and this in the case of isa alayhi salam he speaks about himself i am blessed i am the one who shall remain in peace and so on so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very interestingly uses the word salam salam refers to peace and we all use that term as well may peace be upon you we use the word assalamu alaikum may peace be upon all of us that is the word we normally use and the peace also means no harm shall reach him we're going to need that in a few moments when we come to how they tried to murder him no harm shall reach jesus not at all he is a miracle of allah he is the word of allah the ruh the soul was blown by the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he got the Torah, he got the goodness, he started preaching. And as he started preaching, he always told the people, Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'buduhu hadha siratun mustaqeem. Our maker, the one we worship, the supreme, Allah is the one who made us. He is my Rabb and he is your Rabb. My maker, your maker. The one who protects me, the one who protects you. The one who provides for me, the one who provides for you. So worship him alone and nobody else. This was the message of Jesus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace be upon him and may peace be upon all of us as well. So when we worship, who do we worship? And this is the beauty of Islam. We say Islam is a religion that has no risk. We do not worship a person nor do we worship a stone, nor do we worship a stick, nor do we worship a prophet, nor do we worship a grave, nothing. We worship whoever made me. That's who I worship. That is what all the messengers said. We need to turn the pages of the Quran. We will shiver when we come to see every messenger came with exactly the same message when it comes to belief. The belief was all the same. They taught worship the one who made you, no one else. So when we Muslims, when we bow down or we put our heads on the ground a lot of people think we might be worshiping a black box in mecca some people think we're worshiping the prophet muhammad some people think we're worshiping this and that no we are worshiping the one who made us that is the one for whom i put my head on the ground this is why islam is the fastest growing religion in the world because everyone is fed up of worshipping things, of worshipping wealth, worshipping people, going through Allah via the priest and via the, the church and via this and via a person and via someone else who's an archbishop or whoever else. In Islam, no confession to nobody. You confess to your maker in the darkest hour of the night. Oh my maker, I have done wrong. I admit my error. I regret it. I seek your forgiveness and I won't do it again. Those four conditions, your sin is wiped out. May Allah wipe out our sins. Allahumma innaka afuun to hibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive, so forgive us. That is a powerful dua we should be making on a night like this. This might be the last taraweeh that we've witnessed of the month of Ramadan if we happen to see the moon tomorrow. So it is important for us to know that Islam is a religion that is as straight, even straighter than a pin, if I can word it that way. No risk involved. We put our head on the ground for who? We say, whoever made me, you, you are owed my whole life. Whoever I'm going to return to have mercy on me when I return to you. When you are sick, O owner of cure, cure me. Subhanallah, what risk is there? The owner of cure will cure you. You want to call out, O you who hears the prayers of those who call out to him, hear me. What risk is involved? Nothing at all. The maker of the universe, the creator, the one who made me and you. This is sound intellect. If you are intelligent, you know, I want to pause for a moment. Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu was a powerful warrior at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Most of the wars he took part in, he won. And there was a time he was not a Muslim, but he was very intelligent. And he caused a lot of upset when it comes to the, the wars with the Muslims at the time when he was not a Muslim. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls his brother one day in Medina and says, Oh brother of al-Walid, Khalid ibn al-Walid. Where is Khalid? And he explains, look, he is there and so on. One statement I want to share with you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ma mithlu Khalidin yajahalul islama. It is impossible for a person of the intellect of Khalid ibn al-Walid to be ignorant of the fact that Islam is correct. Ya'ti bihillah. Allah will bring him. 
And it is reported that no sooner was that statement uttered than Khalid bin Walid entered Medina Munawwara and he comes to the Prophet wasallam seeking forgiveness and saying, Ya Rasulullah, I would like to enter the fold of Islam, but I'm worried about the damage that I have done. So I'm worried about all the sin I've committed and all the damage I have done. So the Prophet wasallam says, Ya Khalid, inna al-Islam yajubbu ma qabla. Oh Khalid, I want to tell you, Islam deletes everything that happened before it. So whatever sins you've committed in the past, they are wiped out, deleted, new slate, new sheet. Not only that, we are taught that Tawbah does the same thing for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a new beginning. And the beauty of it, it takes the good deeds with, it only deletes the bad deeds. So it is selective formatting, not just formatting the hard drive, selective formatting. May Allah open our drives, inshallah, <laughs> clear them for us completely. So we have Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he began to call the people. He was so compassionate. He was such a beautiful man. He was so loving. He spoke to people with so much love and passion. He really wanted them to earn paradise. And he was such a beautiful human being. Not only was he a person who was very good looking, but at the same time, calm, relaxed individual with qualities that were super, subhanallah. And he was brought up in a beautiful, fantastic manner with the Torah. And on top of it, Allah revealed the Injil to him. The Injil meaning the Bible was revealed to Isa. We know that the Bibles that are in the hands of the people today, they themselves are disputing as to which is the correct version. So I normally say, please solve your mess and your problem amongst yourselves. When you have one version, come to us, we'll then look into it. But until the time you don't have one version, how can you come and preach it to us? We have one Quran, no two versions. We are preaching it to you. We stand on a higher position. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We believe in Jesus. You cannot be a Muslim if you don't believe in Jesus. May peace be upon him. But we believe the truth. We don't blaspheme anyone. I made mention of it yesterday and the previous day. The minute you hear a narration blaspheming any messenger of Allah, you throw it out of the window. We don't need it. We don't want it. We don't even want to hear it. No matter where it has come from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا أَحَسَّ عِيسَى مِنْهُمُ الْكُفْرَ قَالَ مَنْ أَنصَارِي إِلَى اللَّهِ When Isa alayhi salam noticed that these people are all disbelieving, no one wants to accept my message. He uttered a word. He asked a question. Who is going to be from amongst the helpers of Allah? Who wants to help the cause of their maker? So there were a certain number of people. Some narrations say 17 people. But the bulk of narrations say there were 12 people who came forth and they said, Allah says, قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ نَحْنُ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ أَمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَاشْهَدَ بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ The Hawariyun, the disciples, there was a certain number of men. I told you the most correct opinion, they were 12. The Quran says they came up and they said, we believe in Allah. We will assist the cause. You write our names or bear witness that we are from amongst those who are submitters unto our maker and creator. Never did Jesus, may peace be upon him, call anybody to worship him. He always said, worship the maker who made you. And he always came up with the statements that were very clear cut. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a deeper understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of some of the miracles that were granted to the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. What were these miracles? Allah says, وَرَسُولًا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as a messenger to Banu Israel. Banu Israel meaning the Jewish people. When he came, they split into two. There was a group that accepted him as a messenger. And the group that rejected him as a messenger and they began or they continued to say that this is an illegitimate child born outside of wedlock. May Allah protect us. So those who accepted his message were known as Nasara. Nasara meaning Christians. Those who accepted Jesus Christ. And those who did not, they remained Jewish. But according to us, the prophet of the time is who you are supposed to be behind. So if we were alive at the time of Jesus, what were we supposed to have been? Followers of Jesus. If we were alive at the time of Moses, may peace be upon him, who were we supposed to have followed? The Prophet Moses. 
And if we are now here at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are we supposed to be following? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have Musa, we have Isa, and we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace be upon all of them. But the Jews stop at Musa alayhi salam. The peak of their era was the time of Solomon, Sulaiman alayhi salam. The Quran speaks about it. We spoke about it too here a few days ago. And when it comes to the Christians, the peak of their era was the time of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. They don't accept any messenger thereafter. They say he was na'udhu billah, God or the son of God or a party or a part of a trinity. Islam rejects all that. Islam says, no, he was an upright messenger who came with miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His birth was a miracle. And at that time, there was medicine was at its peak. Medicine was at its peak. So what happened? You find many people who were sick and the doctors came in and the doctors were regarded as top people who could cure. But there were certain sicknesses that could not be cured. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Isa alayhi salam came with the following miracles. Isa alayhi salam speaking when he was a child, but it happened later on. He made a bird-like statue of clay and blew in it. Suddenly it developed wings and flew off as a real bird. That's what the Quran says. That was a miracle given to the Prophet Isa. Jesus may peace be upon him. He would make something out of clay, image of a bird, blow into it, it would fly off as a real bird. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَنِّي أَخْلُقُ لَكُمْ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَأَنْفُخُ فِيهِ فَيَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَأُبْرِئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ وَأُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Three things are mentioned in this part of the verse. He was given the miracle by the power of Allah. This is not him. He says this is done by the leave of Allah, by the permission of Allah. Allah gives. All the prophets, whatever they had was from Allah by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, Allah gave me the permission to do this to a bird. Secondly, those who were born blind, when he wiped his hand over their eyes, rubbed slightly, they began to see, they opened their eyes. This was not, we spoke about miracles a few days ago of nowadays where people use the jinn to cure people. This was a miracle of a prophet. There is a difference between the miracle of a prophet and something that is unacceptable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us light so that we can see. And may Allah grant us eyesight. Some people have sight, but they don't see the signs of Allah. They are blinded to them. So here Allah is saying, he had this miracle. Jesus, may peace be upon him, could cure people who were born blind. That is what the Quran says. And the Quran says over and above that, when people had the disease of leprosy, the lepers, he would touch them and they would be cured. Their skin would return as pure as ever, as clean as ever, as healthy as ever. And on top of that, one of the biggest miracles that he had, after a person had died, he could go there and bring them back to life by the will of Allah. And this is mentioned in the Quran. And he says, it is not from me, it is from my maker, Allahu Akbar. This is given to me by the power of Allah. Why? Because the doctors used to say that they can prolong the life of people. So Allah says, hang on. You think you can prolong the life of people. Let them die. We will bring them back to life. Subhanallah. So he was one step higher. And this is why we mentioned the miracle of Musa alayhi salam, the prophet Moses, when he put his stick. And when those put their ropes, they knew that this is something that is from the creator. It's not magic. In the same way here, all those who wanted to see, they knew this is not medicine. This is no joke. This is no coincidence. This is something from the maker himself. Nobody can give life to the dead besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, these were some of the miracles that happened. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Now let's get to... Another point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him, instructed his disciples to fast for a month. And they fasted. And when they fasted, they now said, you know, we all have fasted, mashallah, for a month. 
And we all would like goodness. Allah says, "Wali to kmilu l'iddata, wali to kabbiu Allah ala ma hadakum, wala ala kum tashkurun." You finish the prescribed time. You praise Allah, declare His greatness for what He has given you. Thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And in order that you may be thankful, Allah has given you the day of Eid. The day of Eid is a day of happiness. So here, the disciples asked him. Listen to what Allah says. إذ قال الحواريون يا عيسى بن مريم هل يستطيع ربك أن ينزل علينا ما إدة من السماء؟ O Jesus, O Isa, we want you to bring forth. Is it possible for your Rabb to bring forth a laid tablecloth, a laid tablecloth from heaven for us? We fasted the whole month. Now we need something from Allah. So Isa alayhi salam, Allah says, He said, "Qalat taqullaha in kuntumu'minin." Be fearful of Allah. If you are true believers, be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa taala. They continued asking. They said, "No, no, no. We don't mean bad. We are believers, but we would like it for a reason. Here's the reason." "Qalu nuridu an nakula minha." We want to eat from it. Some food from heaven. We want to eat from it. قَالُوا نُرِيدُ أَن نَأْكُلَ مِنْهَا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُنَا وَنَعْلَمَ أَن قَدْ صَدَقْتَنَا وَنَكُونَ عَلَيْهَا مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ So they said, we want to eat from it. We want our hearts to be more at ease that really it is true. What we have asked you, you have brought it for us. We will believe, we will be the witnesses and so on. Now it is reported that some of these disciples, their belief within their heart was not very strong. They were still a little bit shaky because the whole community was against them. And the community didn't want. A lot of them were on the side of those who had rejected the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in fact, these people continued. قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ اللَّهُمَّ رَبَّنَا أَنزِلْ عَلَيْنَا مَائِدَةً مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ تكون لنا عيدا لأولنا وآخرنا وآية منك ورزقنا وأنت خير الرازقين عيسى عليه السلام made a dua Jesus may peace be upon him supplicated his creator and he says oh my maker send for us a laid table cloth of food so that it can come to us as a point of happiness a day of joy so that the first and the last of us can all eat from it let it be a sign and it will be a sign for those who are here so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qala allah inni munazziluha alaykum okay i'm sending it to you here it comes subhanallah the tablecloth allah says we have laid it completely and we're sending it down فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بَعْدُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنِّي أُعَذِّبُهُ عَذَابًا لَا أُعَذِّبُهُ أَحَدًا مِّنَ الْعَالَمِينَ If after I send that laid table cloth and you have all enjoyed the food and seen what it was all about, then if anyone still disbelieves, I will punish him a severe punishment. Let him know that. So Allah sent the laid tablecloth, mashallah, it is reported that they ate. Whether or not it was the last supper, Allah knows best. But they ate, you know, in the testaments, they speak of a last supper. Whether or not it was that, Allah knows best. But they ate and it is reported that so many people ate. The food was not depleted. This was a sign. It was a miracle. Thousands of people according to some narrations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of this in the Quran. Now, after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something that happened to the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. The people began to get fed up of him because he was taking away their popularity. Those who were supposedly religious, those who had followers, their followers were now slowly talking about this messenger who came with this miracle, that miracle. He was the talk of the town. That created jealousy in the hearts of some of these people who had rejected him. So they hatched a plan. What was the plan? They went to the king of the time and they told him there is a man called Jesus of Bethlehem. This Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, he 
is saying this and saying that and his eyes are on your kingdom he wants your seat in fact he is going around saying he is the king now this is blasphemy this is incorrect lies jealousy a plan and a ploy this king without finding anything out nothing at all he decides we can sort him out by doing what send our men look for him now I have not made mention of all the difficulties suffered by Jesus we have not gone into those details where the people made him suffer but he was calm he was very very calm very forgiving he never wanted to revenge anybody no one not at all he just continued with his work and he was always positive not negative and every time there was an opportunity to call people towards the Almighty he used it and he was very patient and calm and they began to say oh this is what a wonderful man and so on but the others who were disbelieving they fell to this plot so when the people came they wanted to know where is Jesus he was nowhere to be found where is he we want to know now the disciples knew where he was and I'm mentioning to you one narration the disciples knew where he was there was one of the disciples the name given is Judas Iscariot Allah knows best who exactly he was but one of the disciples and he decided to become a traitor in fact shaitan overtook him the devil overtook him and he led the men of this king and the jewish people who were behind wanting to murder jesus may peace be upon him to the room where he was and there was a little window so as this one man goes in to confirm that jesus is in the room who was he he was the disciple they sent him in you go and confirm that he is in the room they this man goes into the room and he is now a traitor yet he's supposed to be a disciple he goes into the room and he is asking isa alayhi salam he's just confirming that he is there and at that moment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the face of judas so it became the face of jesus and allah took jesus away through that window gone up into the heavens in the proper form of the human being that he was taken up ascension of Jesus this is the Islamic version of the Quran he was taken up completely well before anybody could harm him Allah says at the beginning was salamu alayya peace be upon me they won't harm me at all nothing so Jesus Christ may peace be upon him was not harmed at all nothing he was taken up and the face of this traitor was made to be the face of Jesus so now he was taking long to come out a little while later he comes out these people are looking they see Jesus they go and hold him he says hey I am Judas no ways so if you are Judas where is Jesus and if you are Jesus where is Judas they went back in so they didn't know they were also a little bit confused but facially they knew this is Jesus and this man is continuing to say I am not Jesus I am Judas they took him they put a huge cross for him they nailed him into the cross and according to one narration they they took a crown of thorns as a means of disgrace for him and they placed it on his head and they were happy telling everyone we have crucified jesus but allah knows jesus was taken well before anybody could harm him subhanallah no one harmed him so where is jesus right now may peace be upon him he is alive he is in heaven. He is with Allah. We believe he is going to come back. Allah says, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ Indeed, he will be one of the signs of the coming of the hour. He will come down just before the hour. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes the place where he will come down. In Asham, at the moment it's the country of Syria. He says, the, the eastern part, a certain place, some of the scholars say, close to where the Amawi Masjid is today. And he will come down in a specific place. Allahu Akbar. He's going to come down towards the end of the time. And Allah says, Wa immin ahlil kitabi illa la yu'min an nabihi qabla mawtih wa yawm al qiyamati yakunu alayhim shaheeda. All the true people of the book will believe in him before his final death. When he comes, he will live for a certain number of years. He will rule. He will spread the truth. He will spread the oneness. He will destroy the cross and he will do so many things. He will kill the Antichrist and what have you. And thereafter, he will also die. And Allah says they will believe in him before he dies. He will come with these signs. And this is why Allah says, 
وما صلبوه ولكن شبه لهم they did not kill Jesus nor did they crucify Jesus but they were confused about him وإن الذين اختلفوا فيه لفي شك من and those who were disputing about this Judas Allah says they were in doubt even when they were crucifying this man and even before and even after they are in plain doubt up to today who exactly was crucified if you take a look at the biblical versions of the crucifixion so many contradictions in the story so many you just have to pick up a book or two of comparative studies between Islam and Christianity and you will see the amount of discrepancies that are in the story of how Jesus was crucified because it was not Jesus who was crucified there was a face of Judas that was made to now look like Jesus and this is why they crucified a man believing that he was the one but because he was a traitor he was punished by the Almighty now the Christians believe he died on the cross as a redemption for our sins we Muslims say it is an injustice for us sitting here in Cape Town in this masjid to say there is a lot of adultery a lot of armed robbery a lot of sin so in order for us to absolve ourselves from all this let's pick the most pious from amongst us and crucify him in that corner and inshallah that will mean all our sins are expiated that is injustice the gravest injustice is to punish a person who did not commit the sin so as Muslims we believe it is blasphemous to think that the Almighty would punish someone on another person's behalf it's blasphemous Again, another piece of blasphemy. But this is our belief. Remember, our belief is pristine, pure, undebatable. You can't argue with it. It has no blasphemy in it at all. Let's talk about something else. If he was a son of God, or as some of them say, part of God, or some of them say, God himself. So God was crucified. What's going to happen to all of us? Allahu Akbar. And this is why we say that that is another blasphemy. To call him a part of God, to call him a son of God, to call him these names, that is all blasphemous to the real maker, the one who created all of us. Instead of saying, oh Jesus, you say, oh my maker, redeem me, oh my maker, forgive me, oh my maker, when I return to you, have mercy on me. The minute you say, oh Jesus, have mercy on me, there's a very, very big risk. I like to tell my Christian friends, you know what, you are either right or wrong, but I'm always right. I say, oh my maker, forgive me. Oh you who is the owner of forgiveness, forgive me. Oh you whom I'm going to return to, have mercy on me the day I return to. I have never taken a risk. The minute you say, oh Jesus, forgive my sin, you're taking a very big risk. Because even according to your own statement, you know in religion, nobody can guarantee anything. That's the beauty of religion. You need to have belief to believe. And this is why Islam is all about belief and all religions are about belief. But you have to use your sense. You have to apply the common knowledge that Allah has given you. So you have to ask yourself, look, we need to believe, but believe what? Believe without risk because you live once, only once. So if you are to risk it once, it's over. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. Now you find another statement. People say Jesus' blood was spilt for you. May Allah forgive us. As we said, it encourages people to commit sin, number one. Number two, it means the Almighty is more unjust than the tyrant rulers of today who punish innocent people. That is another piece of blasphemy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I hope we have clarified a lot. So Islam says all this is blasphemous. We rise above all of that. We say Jesus was not God, nor was he the son of God, nor was he the part of a trinity, nor was he crucified. He was an honored messenger born to Mary without a father by the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of the creator who had before him already created Adam and Eve and who had created every single one of us. The power of the same maker created Jesus and allowed him to speak from the cradle and clarified who he was and gave him the Torah and gave him the, the Bible and told him to teach the people and later on he had so many miracles that were manifest with his hands that Allah had granted him permission to do and to show the people those who accepted were successful and those who rejected had failed and thereafter they planned to kill him and when they planned to kill him they were in confusion as to who exactly they crucified because Allah took him away well before they could harm him that in a nutshell is the life of Isa alayhi salam. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
On the day of judgment, there is going to be a statement between Allah, the maker, and between this messenger, Jesus. Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Allah says, we will ask Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him on the day of judgment. And the past tense is used here because time is a creature of the Almighty. To him, past, present, future is all just nothing. It's just a creature of his. It's as good as done. He has created time and put us into what we know as present tense. But for him, the future is as good as past and the past is as good as the present and everything is just time. Time is a creature of Allah. Our brains are too small to understand that. We need to just know the statement. Time is a creature. And time is going to be killed when it comes to the life after death. When no matter how many years we've lived for, it will still be as though we have not lived. And we will not be living for anything but eternity. So we won't know when we started and we won't know when, it, when it's ending. Because it's not going to end. Because time is gone. If you take time out of the equation, what happens to you? Allahu Akbar. May Allah open our doors. So, Jesus may peace be upon him. Allah says, we will ask him, Oh Jesus, did you tell the people to worship yourself and your mother besides the maker and the creator, besides me who made you? And Jesus is going to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanak ma yakunu li an aqula ma laysa li bihaqqa. Glory be to you, O oh my Maker, all high. It is impossible for me to utter any word besides that which you instructed me to utter. I did not tell them that. I didn't tell them to worship myself, to worship my mother. <laughs> Had I said it, O oh Allah, you would have known it. You know everything about me. You know what is hidden in me. I do not have that knowledge which you possess, Ya Allah. You know the unseen completely. Then he continues to say, I only told them what you instructed to tell me to tell them and that is worship Allah who made me and who made you. Worship the one who made me and who made you. That is the one you will call him the worshipped one. In the Hebrew language they use the term Eloha or Elohim to refer to Allah which means the worshipped one. Subhanallah. Then he says, I did not utter anything besides which you, that which you told me to say to them, that worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةَ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jesus said, Whoever associates partnership with the Maker will definitely end up in hellfire and will lose the heaven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Then he says, Oh Allah, if you want to punish them, they are your worshippers. You have that. You own that. Allah made. He can do what He wants. So He's saying, Ya Allah, if you want to punish them, they are your worshippers. And if you want to forgive them, Ya Allah, if you forgive them, you are indeed all powerful, all wise, you know. Allah is the one whom he knows he can punish, but over and above that he still forgives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We have another very, very interesting verse of the Quran. Allah says, Jesus may peace be upon him, warned his people and reminded them that Allah is going to send you a comforter to come. Allah will send you a man who will continue my message that you should worship Allah alone. You know, the laws of jurisprudence might differ, but the laws of belief have not differed from the time of Adam right to the end. The belief in the Almighty, the Maker, the belief in the messengers, the belief in the books, the belief in the angels, the belief in good and bad is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the belief in the last day and the resurrection, all that, all the messengers came with exactly the same message ditto. 
But when it comes to the laws of jurisprudence, what is permissible, what is prohibited, how to pray, how not to pray, what to do, what not to do in terms of jurisprudence, that differed with the differing of time. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with that which encapsulated absolutely everything we need right up to the end of time. So Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ When Isa, remember, he told his people, Jesus told his people, O children of Israel, إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ I am a messenger unto you, and I confirm the message of the Torah that is between my hands. وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ and I'm giving you good news of a messenger who is going to come after me, whose name shall be the praised one. Subhanallah. Allah says, فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ When the clear signs came to them later on, they said, this is magic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness. So, Jesus, may peace be upon him, warned his people and gave them glad tidings at the same time of a messenger to come after. He was known as a comforter and he was known as the bearer of praise. The praised one. You take a look at Muhammad is from the root of Ahmad, Hamida to praise. So he is the praised one. And he came with exactly the same message as what the Christians are supposed to be following. And this is why we tell them, read the Quran without blinkers. Read the Quran and see the message in there. And take your time, read it cover to cover. When Najashi, the Negus of Abyssinia, was faced with some of the companions, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and the others, they went to him and they told him, we are coming from Mecca. There is a man who has, you know, who is a Nabi and so on and so forth. So the Kuffar of Quraysh had also decided to send a little delegation there. And Najashi on the Negus of Abyssinia, which is now roughly where Ethiopia is, he asks, he says, what do they say? Because these people said, you know, you believe in Jesus. These people speak a very grave lie against Jesus. So he asked a question, what do you say about Jesus? So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum who were there at the time, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and the others recited this verse, the opening verses of Surah Maryam regarding Jesus and everything I mentioned today, most of it is in those verses. So he started to cry. Who was crying? The king of Abyssinia, the Negus. According to some narrations, his name was Ashama. And he was crying. These tears are mentioned in the Quran. The tears are mentioned in the Quran. And he looked at these people. He says, this is the truth regarding Jesus. It's exactly who he was. He was a slave of Allah. He was a worshiper of Allah. He was not a God, nor was he part of God, nor was he a son of God. Amazing. And he believed. It's reported when he passed away, the Prophet ﷺ read Janaza al Ghaib in his absence whilst in Medina Munawwara and said, There is one of our brothers who has passed away today in, the, in Abyssinia and we'd like to read Janaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. The last point we want to close with this evening, inshaAllah. Muhammad ﷺ, towards the end of his life, showed a lot of concern about something. So much so that one day he got up and very, very strongly warned all of us. And you'll find this hadith in most books of hadith. He looks at his companions and he says, لا تطروني كما أطرت النصار ابن مريم ولكن قولوا عبد الله ورسوله I fear for you, O my people. Do not go beyond the limits with me. Just like the Christians, the devil got hold of them and they went beyond the limits with Jesus. Always refer to me as Abdullahi wa Rasuluhu, the slave of Allah and His Messenger. This is why we say La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ashhadu Alla ilaha illallah, wa Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasuluhu. Where did we get that from? He said, Always refer to me as Abduhu wa Rasuluhu, so that you remember, I am not a God, I am not a part of God. I am not a part of a trinity and I am not someone who is going to be worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am a slave of Allah, a messenger who has come to you, be warned, do not raise my status higher than it actually is. It's already the highest. There were five messengers who were the highest. Who were they? Jesus Christ. May peace be upon him. 
the Prophet Abraham, the Prophet Moses, the Prophet Noah, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is important for us to know the level of these who were the greatest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention. We know the top, top of the ladder, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Thereafter, Musa alayhi salam. Then Isa alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam, the last two. Allah knows what is the order, but we know the order of the top three. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of goodness. Alhamdulillah, with this we have completed some of the lessons of the stories of the Quran.